Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, we're going to be talking about different ways you can move objects in your game. I've got a scene set up here with five spheres that will all move in slightly different ways. We've got a collider at the end, and then we have another collider here just with is trigger checked and the mesh renderer turned off. So I'm going to hit play, we'll watch them all move, and then we'll go through these different movement methods. You can see the add force one kind of flew away. And all the others are moving at about the same speed. They turned green when they went through the trigger and red once they hit the collider. You may notice that these ones right here, the uh, transform translate ones are kind of bouncing off. The rigid body ones are pretty much still. So let's talk about the different methods here. The first one and most obvious that I see people use and the one that I honestly use the most is the transform position changing. So if we look at that guy, that's the transform move transform position. I'm going to open up the script, and all we do here is take the current transform position and we add on the forward direction times the time.delta time variable. This is just so our speed is consistent across different frame rates. So if we're running at 100 frames a second, this update would get called more. If we don't take into account delta time here, our speed would vary based off of that frame rate. And a lot of time we'll put a speed multiplier in here too. You'll see that in some of the other examples. Let's take a look at the next one, transform.translate. So this one, again, it just moved kind of straight along with the uh, transform set position. And it works in a very, very similar way. It's almost exactly the same underneath. We just, instead of giving it a new position, we give it an amount to move. And under the hood, it just does the addition for us. And now when we pass in vector 3.forward, this is going to be relative to our forward direction. So if we do vector 3.forward, we're going to move in our forward whatever way we're facing. Now we can change that with an overload. So there's a space dot relative to, and if you really want to move it in world space instead, you can select world space and it'll go in the world's forward direction here or whatever vector that you give it. All right, I'm gonna jump over to some of the rigid body ones now. So let's watch one more time and watch the add force one. So that one's gonna kind of fly ahead. It gets there way before everything else. And I wanna show you how that works. I'm gonna open up the add force script now this one has a multiplier here. Um, I think I actually changed the value in here, so it's actually set to five right here. But in the code, I think I left the defaults relatively high. Um, and we're doing a couple things. The first thing we do is just cache a reference to the rigid body in the awake method. But then in the update, we're adding force in the forward direction and multiplying it by our force multiplier. Remember again, I'm using five here, not 200, when we're actually in the scene. So this is just going to kind of launch it forward, but since it's an add force call and it's not setting a specific velocity and we're not moving into a certain amount, we're adding force every single frame. Now this is not using time.delta time, which it probably should be. So we should do something like time.delta time and then maybe a value of 200 makes more sense. And then that would make it so that it, at least it accelerates at the same rate no matter what our frame rate is. But the key thing here is that, remember, we're just adding on force, continually adding force, and it's just going to keep speeding up. That's why, again, watch it one more time. you see it's going to, let's crank that value up real quick, about 200, since we added in that time dot delta time multiplier. And that value is really small, and it's going to be like 0 0.016 or 0 0.016. Um, so we got to multiply it up. But you saw there it just kind of flew across pretty quick, I hope. Now I want to go on to the rigid body move position one. Now I don't usually use this. Um, I think there are a couple cases where people recommend it, but um, I don't use it very often. I can't think of the last time that I used this call. But it works very similar to the um, transform set position. So essentially we give it, we call move position and we're just setting this thing's position to a new position. So if I maybe refactor this out and call this, so let's introduce a new local and call this new position. I think it might make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. So we figure out the new position, the spot right in front of us, and then we set it here by calling move position. I believe this does, uh, it's supposed to work really well with kinematic rigid bodies and moving them around. Again, not something that I really ever use. Um, the last one here is the rigid body set velocity. So I'm going to open that one up. This one I think is pretty interesting and it's something that I actually do use quite often. Um, and that's done very similar to the other way. We're just caching the rigid body. But instead of calling add force or move, 
we're just setting the velocity value. And the velocity value is getting set to the transform.forward direction times delta time times the force multiplier. Now, a lot of the time what I'll do with a rigid body set velocity is not actually do this in an update. I do it more when I launch an object. So maybe in the awake, in the start, or in a method called launch or fire or something that really is supposed to send the object off because once this velocity is set it's just going to kind of keep moving. Now we do have some drag actually I think we have our drag set to zero so we have no drag it's just going to keep going along fine. If we added some drag it would eventually slow down. See there we go added drag and now it slows down. Now there are a few things to think about when you're deciding which one of these methods to use and one of those things is whether or not you're using a kinematic rigid body. So if you happen to have your rigid body and it's kinematic, meaning you don't want it to interact with the physics system, you want it to kind of move on its own, you notice that only these three work. You can't set velocity or add force to a kinematic rigid body. It just won't do anything. You're also not going to get these collisions here. You may have noticed that too. We do get that trigger enter, but not the collision. Now again, just to reiterate it one more time, usually I use transform.position and I just set that Unless I'm working with something that I really need to work with the physics system, in which case I'll usually use add force or I'll set the velocity, depending on if I want the thing to kind of speed up or be a one-time shot, or if I really just want to set a very specific velocity there. And now I just turned on gravity for the fun of it. So I hope this is a little bit helpful. There are a couple other ways that you can move objects as well, but again, these are the most common. And again, transform setting position is probably the most common. Um, but it's worth knowing about all of them and kind of trying them out and experimenting a little bit yourself. So hope this is somewhat helpful for you. If it is, please share, thumbs up, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.